Yeah, and if there's anything like I want to scream from the rooftops, it's, you know, someone call Marvel in DC and let them know that this is what real superheroes look right. like. God will give you the people you need to help you out. But you just gotta, you gotta be willing to take that first baby step. And the baby step is the hardest part. I stepped into my uncomfortable and I found Jesus there. The first foreign mission trip that I ever went on was this um, trip to Niger, Africa, and um, it's unlike anything I'd ever experienced. And so we're staying in this kind of Bible college looking thing, and in the back of this room is this um, little hand-stitched kind of plaque that says, taste and see that the Lord is good. That verse, to me, kind of defines what Kilmarnock is about. It's taking a bunch of teenagers away. Um, giving them a bunch of hand tools, we do something, we finish it, and we step back and go, wow, that's good. And so when we take kids away to kill morning, we introduce them to that. We give them a taste of what God is like. And then we say, okay, time for you to take us back home. And what does it look like at home? It won't be paint, most likely won't be painting a house or putting on shingles or building a ramp. It'll be something else. Are you willing to taste God when you get back home? I think the power of Kilmarnock is in the discomfort that we experience. Um, in our day-to-day -day lives, we really tr we shape an existence that's based in comfort. Um, and it's so easily, within a, within a half an hour of getting back to home, those sensations are gonna start to get blurry and they're gonna start to fade because we remember what all day air conditioning feels like. We remember what a couch feels like. And so we very quickly just kind of slide right back into a place of, ah, I'm comfortable. And you know what it's like when you're comfortable, you don't really generally seek out discomfort, but we get uncomfortable for this whole week on purpose so that we can kind of start to break those I don't know, those, those habits, I guess. And really realize that God is usually in places where we would naturally be uncomfortable. As the leaders, we do say it's not about the work. The work is the excuse. The work is hard, it's not easy. Through the work, we're having a big impact on the local community and, and the homeowners. I remember uh, uh, something a parent told me a few years ago, their older kids went, came back to Kilmarnock, and they were sharing the stories with one of the younger siblings, and they didn't know how to describe it. I, I struggled to describe it sometimes, and they said, at first you go and you're on a roof, or you're doing a wheelchair ramp, or you're painting a house, and you really don't know why you're there. By your third time there, you know that God has a purpose for you. Right. And it's in the stories of the homeowners that the impact really happens during the week we're there. And I appreciate it and I appreciate your kindness and your warmth and it make me feel like I'm somebody. Yeah. And that I'm deserving of something good done for me. And this is my blessing today. There was a tragedy in one homeowner's life. And yes, so we have kids on a roof, working on a, on reshingling it, uh, listening to Christian music, singing and dancing on the singing roof. And, and the family comes to pick up the lady who seemed to struggle to get out of bed early in the morning. And everyone is dressed impeccably. And the lady comes out. And what we learn is that day she went and buried her 40-year-old daughter. Nobody knows that on the roof. Yep. And so, but that we, we learned that. And so, you know, in my heart, it's like, boy, I hope while that lady was laying in bed, finding it hard to get out, to, uh, out of bed to face the day, the sound of kids singing and dancing right. on her roof had some form of biblical impact on her that week. When you, you think about it, when you have 30 people that come to our drive two hours and pay, money to come to your house to help you <laughs> it's just not normal and 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 she could feel the love that that was around that place in the long term what the trip does 
You see it play out in the baptisms of these students. Uh, you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? It hits me every time when their testimony is read and somewhere in there it says, it all changed for me at Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock was really the first time that I discovered that, you know, this faith is to share with others and to be shared with others. And that's why it's important to me and why I feel like it's really important for the middle school students to experience because I feel like it was a pivotal point in my faith and can be a pivotal point in their faith too, just realizing that this faith is more than just knowing who Jesus is and knowing the Bible. Not everybody can go, just logistically, financially, in whatever way, not everybody can go. Um, so you might look at people who go away on a trip or go to a destination or whatever, and you say, that's not really my thing. Uh, mission trips may not be your thing, but serving is everybody's thing. If you, especially if you claim to follow Jesus, serving is everybody's thing. The minute we, we want something out of it, then it doesn't become serving anymore. It's a transaction. Kilmarnock's not a transaction. Yeah, as soon as it's transactional, it's not serving. Yeah, like the Pharisees who would serve in public in front of everyone, but it would just be to get the applause of so, others. Yeah. They, they, were, they were getting the recognition, right. and they were looking to check boxes, score points. There's nothing about Kilmarnock that is that. One of the most dangerous things that we can do as followers of Jesus is to pray a simple prayer. And that is, God, help me to see people the way that you see them. When I see you the way that God sees you, I'm going to treat you radically differently than, than I myself would treat you. I, as a sinful, broken human being, would look at you probably as an obstacle. Or, what can I get from you that's going to make my life better? But when I ask God to give me a vision let me see people the way that he sees them. I'm gonna see somebody that Jesus himself shed his blood for, a precious, beloved creation. And when I see you that way, and I know that that's how God views you, I'm gonna look at you very differently and I'm gonna treat you very differently. Why don't more people come on the trip? Um, there, there's a story I heard in, of someone many, many years ago who was traveling into a part of the world where the gospel hadn't been taken. There's a little bit of one-sided view of the conversation, but clearly the person he's talking to is saying, I couldn't do that. And the guy's response is you, something like, you might not have been called to spend a week in Kilmarnock with middle schoolers, but the question you have to answer is, were you called to stay at home? Yeah. And so, I give that challenge to everyone. It, okay, this trip is not your thing. There's a ton of other stuff that happens in this church. Right. Were you called to stay at home or were you called to get involved? You've got to be willing to at least make that step into your uncomfortable. And that's exactly where you're going to find Jesus. Yeah. When we come here, we come expecting big things to happen. But why can't we expect big things to happen at home? God's still there. He still works miracles. I know we live our normal everyday lives, we can get away from that here, yeah. but God is there in that too. A lot of times we fall into this um, um, falsehood that uh, I don't know what to do or I don't see anything around me. I don't have the opportunities that like a Kilmarnock would afford. I'm not, my neighbor doesn't need a new roof. I can't go next door and just, you know, start pounding on their roof or building a wheelchair ramp. I can't do those kinds of things. But every single person is a precious gift of God. And every single person has an amazing story. And if you'll stop and listen to that story, you will find not just one, but multiple ways that you can serve somebody. Every person around us is an opportunity to serve. I had a big football guy that I watched the uh, Super Bowl game and um, they pan to the locker room and all these people are in there and there's all these football players just humongous and you know everybody's celebrating in there. Somewhere in that picture there I realized oh man there's all these guys who went out there and they're bleeding out their arms. They got ice packs strapped to them and things taped up and, 
And then there's these guys that are walking around in these perfectly crisp, clean, never been touched. They rode the bench the whole season. And I'm not speaking against those guys, but everybody in that locker room got a Super Bowl ring, but only a few of them were actually in the game and in there getting banged up and beat around. And man, when I get to heaven, I don't want to be one of those guys that comes in with a clean uniform. I want things patched up, taped up. I want to have experienced the Christian life to really have done my best to love others and serve. And um, I think that's what God calls us all to. But Jesus um, knelt down and washed the stinky feet of the disciples. That's what he called us to. And um, I don't want to be one of those pew riding kind of guys that just sits in the back and then kind of rushes out as soon as the invitation starts. I want to be in the middle of it all. I try to live my life just like I'm on a mission trip 24-7. And, um, and I suspect that there are people that have been here that do the exact same thing. But that was good. Just live your life like you're always on a mission trip. That's exactly right. That's pretty good. It works. It works. There you go. <laughs> All right.